One of the Cisco exam objectives uh, for the CCNA is to configure a default VLAN, but that's kind of a Cisco-esque question. Um, if you haven't taken the CCNA or any other Cisco exams before, it's kind of one of those tricky questions. I won't say trick questions, but a tricky question that Cisco likes to frame. Um, because you can't really configure a default VLAN unless you... You can't really do it. By default, VLAN 1 is the default VLAN, and it ships on all of Cisco switches. So I guess technically, if you have a port that's in a VLAN already, like our Fast Ethernet 01, um, if we do a show run, you can see Fast Ethernet 01 is already configured for VLAN 200. So we could technically say no switch port access VLAN 200 on Fast Ethernet 01, and that would send that interface back to the default VLAN, VLAN 1. But there's really no way to configure a default VLAN. It's there already. It's the default. VLAN 1 is by default on all these switch ports. Uh, Fast Ethernet 4 through 24 and Gig01 and Gig02. So um, instead of showing you how to configure one uh, default VLAN in this video, let's just talk about VLAN 1 uh, for a little bit. It's uh, and some best practices that you can do with VLAN 1 because you don't you definitely don't want to leave all of your ports on VLAN 1 just because this the switch ships that way. So imagine if a user, imagine if you left it as is and all of your interfaces were run out to user desks and someone, whoever was connected to Fast Ethernet 04 brought in a wireless access point or something to the office and they just plugged it in. Well now you got a wireless access point that you don't control that's connected to your infrastructure and it's serving up, it's serving as a hotspot and you can't see it, you can't control it and you definitely don't want that happening. What if someone brought in a switch? It could really mess with your your um, your infrastructure as well. If there, you know, it could be VTP, uh, which we'll get into later, but it could wipe out your entire VLAN database. It could wipe out some configurations. It could cause a broadcast storm. Bad stuff happens if you leave it on VLAN one. So here's a couple of best practices that we can do to get things um, a little bit more secure. And we can use our interface range command. Um, no one's connected to Fast Ethernet 4 through 24. So if we do interface range Fast Ethernet 0 slash 4 through 24, uh, first thing that you want to do is just shut down any ports that are not in use. And then the second thing, you want to create some black hole VLAN, something other than VLAN 1. So we are just going to put them all in. So we're going to make them all switch port, uh, switch port access VLAN, and we will say. 678 is our black hole VLAN and it can it creates it in the VLAN database as you've seen before in other videos um, and now we don't want to use VLAN 678 for anything uh, we want that to be essentially our black hole trash VLAN you can see it's shut down the ports are shut down and they're on VLAN 678 and one other thing that I like to do I mean 678 is in the VLAN database right now so what you can really do is just say no VLAN 678 so that's going to remove it that, that removes VLAN 678 from the VLAN database, so it's definitely not going to work. So if you even if you go in to one of these other interfaces and accidentally say no shut on it, someone does plug in something to it, they're going to go to VLAN 678 and their traffic is not going to go anywhere because 678 is not used for anything and 678 doesn't exist in the VLAN database anymore. So that's a good way, um, at least initially, to kind of secure your switch gain control and make sure things are happening the way that you want it to um, and I guess answer Cisco's question of this is how you configure a default VLAN even though we didn't configure a default VLAN as always uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos and uh, ask questions down below thanks